the the reason why it, it did act as a stimulant, the ephedra, is because um, there's a it's a mixture of about six different molecules um, in this herbal remedy, and they fall into the category of amphetamines. And amphetamines are stimulant drugs. And two of the um, drugs that are found naturally in ephedra are ephedrine and pseudephedrine. And if you take a close look at these two molecules, you'll see that they look identical. There's a benzene ring, there's a hydroxyl group, there's an amine group, um, which is where the amphetamine word comes from. These all have amine groups. But anyway, um, <clears throat> it, it, the structures to you might look identical. Um, but the one difference is, in this case, the OH is coming out of the plant of the wall or the computer, whatever you're looking at, and in this case the OH is going back behind the plane. And so this is an example of um, where the um, functional groups can be ordered in, in different ways in a mixture of natural products or um, synthetic products, um, depending on how the, the molecule came together in the first place. And um, <clears throat> it's because this carbon is chiral. And we skipped that part of the chapter, so um, we're not going to get into it. But suffice it to say, even though they look the same, they're really considered structural isomers because um, the order of the functional groups around that particular what's called chiral carbon are different. And as it turns out, a lot of times this shape difference, this different ordering of functional groups, has a biological effect. And as it turns out, the pseudephedrine actually is a better decongestant than the ephedrine, okay, and the other molecules that have similar structure um, in the in the ephedra uh, um, herbal mixture. So it's a better decongestant. And so just like with aspirin, when um, the pharmaceutical chemists, you know, take a, took a close look at the extract from the willow bark and they isolated the um, acetyl, uh, the salicylic acid and realized that that was the active ingredient um, when decongestant, when the um, chemists isolated all the different um, uh, molecules in the ephedrine mixture, they realized that this pseudephedrine was the better decongestant. And so this is a real simple molecule. It can be very easily um, made in the chemical laboratory, and it's the primary ingredient in pseudephed, okay, and other decongestants and allergy medicines. So if you look at any kind of decongestant, cough, cold remedy, look at the, um, look at the ingredients, the active ingredient, you'll probably see pseudephedrine. All right, so it, it's, it's um, and then the side effect, of course, is it's a mild stimulant in the dosage that it's given in over-the-counter drugs. <clears throat> um, but um, notice here this other molecule that's right next to it is uh, another amphetamine um, with a very similar structure, and it's called metamphetamine. And the only difference between pseudophed and metamphetamine is the OH group is now gone. And as it turns out, when that OH group is gone, this particular little molecule is a better stimulant, okay? Without the OH group, it's a better stimulant. So this is a um, derivative of pseudephedrine. And again, it's, the structure chemically is pretty simple. It's not that difficult to make this um, synthetically. You can get to it from different starting materials. But one easy way to get to it with a high percentage yield is to start with pseudephedrine. That's what the metamphetamine um, drug labs started doing. When the drug agencies started cracking down and, and um, you know, tracking people who were bu buying the normal starting materials for the synthesis of metamphetamine, um, they realized, oh, they could just buy Sudafed from the, um, from the drugstore and the grocery store and, um, and chemically modify it to make the methamphetamine. Methamphetamine is, you know, it's like met or crystal met. Depends on how you, you purify it. Or I think it's also called ice. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's a, um, it's a bad, bad drug that people get addicted to because they like the feeling they get when they take it. Um, it's not good for them at all, obviously. I mean, it's been shown that there's heart problems that come from it and erratic behavior and everything else associated with this particular um, drug. And so um, it, it's not a good thing. But I just wanted to show you chemically how similar it is to Sudafed and how similar something that we know is a synthetic product and is a dangerous drug is to a natural product, Fedra.